It's good to see you. Good to see you, Joel. Um, very thankful to, to be here this morning, and especially thankful to have Team Challenge with us. Let's give them a welcome. God bless you guys. We're really thankful to uh, have them here with us today. And uh, I want to mention as well, um, I think Daniel mentioned it earlier, um, Pastor Harvey has a cold, so uh, let's keep him in prayer. He really wanted to be here, especially today with Teen Challenge being here. He's, he really loves uh, the ministry of Teen Challenge. And matter of fact, whenever I um, mention Teen Challenge to him, I say, oh, I talked to Sarah today or, or whatever. He, he says, book it, book it. <laughs> he, wants to, he wants to book him right away. <laughs> So he loves, uh, he loves the ministry of Teen Challenge, and, uh, and so do I. And I'm uh, just so thankful to have him with us. And uh, whenever I see them, it, it just reminds me of, uh, you know, God's grace. And just a, it's just a, a testimony of uh, God's power to save and, and give new life. And uh, it just really uh, blesses me hearing all the testimonies. And uh, one of the scriptures that always reminds me of is Romans 1.16, where it says, uh, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation, to whoever believes. And uh, it truly is the, the power of, God, of the gospel, you know, to, to change a life, to uh, just make it new. Amen. And um, it's just really a, a reminder of God's redeeming power and uh, how he restores, how he heals, how he just uh, gives a whole new life. And uh, for me personally, it's, it's really a, a huge blessing because... Uh, uh, my testimony is uh, from um, God brought me out of a life of addiction, and so I could really uh, relate. You know, I was really uh, messed up um, a number of years ago um, when I was a teenager and up until my early adult years. And uh, so I know, you know, I know God's redeeming power, how He changed my life and just transformed it, and uh, uh, just really blessed me in more ways than I could imagine. Because I remember being in bondage to uh, the sin of uh, of drugs and addiction, and I just thought it was hopeless, you know, I thought I was going to stay in that lifestyle, you know, pretty much the rest of my life, and because I had tried on my own many times over and over again, and I just always found myself going back to it, and, uh, but praise God, God stepped in and uh, changed my life, and uh, I was just so blessed, you know, because God changed my life and blessed me with a, a, a lovely wife, I mean, I never thought I'd ever be married. And God gave me a wife, uh, gave me a, a beautiful daughter, and I'm just so thankful, you know, God, what God can do. And um, I just want to, uh, I wanted to encourage the, you know, those of you in Teen Challenge that, you know, God is, is faithful. I've been with the Lord, you know, for 30 years, and one thing I could tell you, He is faithful. God is so faithful, and He will complete that which He started in you. Amen. And hold on to Him. You go through valleys, you go through difficulties. You go through challenges, but one thing is true, that God is faithful. He will bring you through everything. An enemy will attack you and try to make you doubt, to discourage you along the way. But, you know, God just continues to pick you up. He's picked me up so many times. I've fallen and, like, you know, been discouraged. But God just comes through every time, every time. Been through valleys of, you know, losing my job, uh, just having different kind of problems in my life. And God, God just always comes through. He always comes through. Hallelujah. And uh, God healed relationships. You know, I had, you know, of course, disappointments with my family, with my mom and dad, uh, with my brother. And um, God restored and God healed things between my family. And it's just so awesome, you know, what God can do. Um, and um, going back to my early years, I was thinking about Teen Challenge. And uh, one of the, the people who was really huge blessing ministers was uh, Dave Wilkerson. Um, I remember getting the pulpit series, and I'd watch on, um, on uh, well, I'd ordered actually VHS tapes, is how far back it was. <laughs> I'd order VHS tapes from a Times Square church and get them in the mail and, and watch them, or I'd uh, get audio tapes, you know, listen to those. And, uh, but the testimony uh, about um, his reaching out to Nikki Cruz, and uh, uh, Brother Stephen's going to share about that more in a minute. Uh, I'm going to introduce him, and I don't know if you want to make your way up here, brother, but um, yeah, the, the book, they actually have it over here if you want to. Um, read it. I definitely recommend it. Uh, the story of the cross and the switchblade really ministered to me. And it just uh, tells the story of David Wilkerson and how he went to New York and reached out to Nikki Cruz, who was a, a gang member, a drug user, and all that. And just really encouraging. And especially for, I, I see it in two ways, you know, both the transformation of Nikki Cruz, how God saved him. But I also think uh, for those of you who may be, uh, you may feel, well, I don't have a 
background of drugs or I don't have, know anything about that. I mean, Dave Wilkerson was just a country preacher, right, from Pennsylvania and just, uh, you know, God uh, got a hold of him and told him to go to New York to reach this, this gang member. And he went out there and if I remember in the book, he was, you know, dressed in a suit and all that out on the streets in New York <laughs> and uh, reaching out to gang members. But, you know, he had the power of the Holy Spirit in his life and the Word of God. And that's where he went, you know, preaching the gospel. Sometimes people think, oh, I, gotta, I don't have no knowledge of, you know, gang life or whatever that kind of background. But it doesn't matter if you have the Word of God and you have the Holy Spirit in you, God will use you. Amen. And just a surrendered life. And um, anyway, um, Stephen, you want to come up here? And thank you once again, brother, for coming here. Thank you. Thank you, church. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Everybody doing good? I'm super excited to be in church. It's amazing. It's been a while since we've been in a, in a church service. So thank you, guys. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you for having us. Um, as Pastor was saying, uh, um, Teen Challenge has been around for over 60 years, um, and it, it was started by uh, David Wilkerson. I was reading the other day, which was super amazing, was a little bit more of a back, the backdrop story of, of, the, of the way Teen Challenge started. And um, so back in 1958, uh, there was a, a murder trial going on. Uh, the gangs in New York had killed a, a young kid by the name of um, Michael Farmer. Michael Farmer had a, he, he had a disease, it was polio. Um, him and one of his friends were, were out one night swimming and um, there was, you know, there was a lot of gangs in, in New York City and, and there was this one gang called the, the Egyptian Dragons. Uh, and they would hide and they would just fight with rival gang members. Um, one day, you know, this kid was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, the gang members uh, landed up uh, killing Michael. His friend uh, got away, but Michael could not get away because of his polio. He couldn't run. So um, he landed up getting beat. Uh, within that, there was a whole bunch of teenagers that were, that were on the murder trial. I think there was like over 15 teenagers that were, that were doing this murder trial thing. And David Wilkerson was a man of prayer. And his prayer life, um, he was reading the Time, uh, Time magazine and he was seeing uh, that, these, that these teenagers were on this murder trial. And he had this inclination to go to the courtroom and tell them that they needed salvation and not incarceration. He just felt drawn to it. So um, David Wilkerson set out to New York City. He went to the courtroom. He got kicked out of the courtroom. Um, he wasn't able to reach uh, those, those teenagers that were there. He went back home, but he still felt this pull to go back to New York, so, so he did. And while he's walking around the streets, he sees that there's a lot of gang activity and a lot of drug use between the teenagers. So there's a big old heroin epidemic going on. Um, and that's, that's where uh, his ministry uh, started. So he opened up some homes. Um, it did start with teenagers. As you guys will see in a little bit, we're not all teenagers. Um, throughout the 60 years, Teen Challenge has branched out to have um, male, uh, adult, adult uh, men centers, adult women centers, uh, women and children centers. We, we still have adolescent centers. Uh, today, we have uh, the Allen Rock Women and Children Center with us. Uh, we have the Asbury Family Center, and we have the Oakland Men Center. These three centers are very uh, close to my heart, and not only am I director of the Allen Rock Women and Children's Center and the Asbury Family Center, but I'm a graduate of the program. Um, I graduated, uh, let's see, I'm going on eight years now ago. Uh, I, 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 I am so um, pleased with the work that God does in this ministry. You know, when I was thinking about uh, the, the backdrop of Teen Challenge, and I, and I thought, wow, man, the tragedy of one boy and the obedience of one man has reached thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Um, we live in a time now where there's a lot of tragedy. There's a lot of people um, getting tried and, and, we're, and we're, we're, you know, our limits are getting pushed and everything. But if we lay hold to that, God has a plan, right? Yeah. With, every, with every tragedy, if, if there's one obedient person, we, we could change. We could change uh, a life, right? Through, through the power of the Holy Spirit, of course. Uh, we're big believers in Teen Challenge. Um, we believe in the Jesus factor. We are just God's vessel, and we, um, we, we just, I, I try to, all the students, you know, I'm always telling them that Jesus is the reason. Um, it's nothing of me. It's all the Holy Spirit, and God has been doing a tremendous work. So uh, when we get these opportunities to come and bless you guys, we are so excited. So I'm going to have the choir come up, and, and they're going to sing a few songs. We're going to fellowship. You guys will hear a, a few testimonies of what God is doing in uh, these uh, people's lives. Um, 
you know, God is doing an amazing work in each and every one of their lives. Uh, the most uh, amazing part for me when, when uh, being director and being part of the center is seeing them when they come into the center, right? I get that glimpse. You guys get this glimpse, right? You get the, the bright-eyed and bushy-tailed glimpse, and, and they're healthy now, and they're, they're excited. Um, I get the glimpse when they walk in the door. I get the glimpse of when they're completely broken, when they're, they have, they've lost all hope, um, they, they, they don't know what to do, they're just completely lost. And then as the time progresses, and we start feeding them Jesus, and we tell them Jesus loves you, and Jesus has a purpose in your life, and Holy Spirit will fill you, and then they just start walking out and, and learning these, these new obedience things that God has asked them to do, and then they just, they just get full, right? We get full of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit does this work in us, you guys. That is so amazing. It's so amazing. You know, I can't help but when praise goes on, I can't help but scream and yell and, and, and just thank God for what he's done because only I know where I've been, right? Me and my family members, only I know where God pulled me out. When I was in the deepest, in the deepest, darkest parts of my life, only I could feel that. Only I knew, right? The days that I wanted to hang myself, the days that I didn't feel worthy, the days that I looked at my children and I thought, God, what am I doing? My kids are watching me drown myself. My wife. Only I can know that, right? So when I say, thank you, Jesus, I mean it. <laughs> I mean it. Right? So again, just thank you, guys. Thank you. And, and I, um, I hope you guys are blessed.
Jordan. I'm 27 years old. Um, so I had a good um, upbringing as a childhood. Um, my family was Catholic. I was in private school. Um, up until middle school, I uh, got to go to a public school. I then started running away. Um, slowly as the years progressed, I got into drugs. I hung out with the wrong crowd. Um, I justified running away by doing my homework so that way I could afford to take time off um, from school. Um, up in my early 20s, I got into IV using, um, it was meth and heroin. Um, I was a polysubstance IV user. Um, I just really distanced myself from my family. Um, there was like really no communication at all. Uh, I then became homeless. Uh, so it was last year, um, on December 22nd, I hadn't talked to my family for about a year and a half, and my aunt saw me outside of Rayleigh's, and she stopped and she was like, Jordan, how are you doing? And I mean, I didn't really have anything good to say, you know, as far as like what I was doing, but um, she asked if there's anything that she could get me. I asked for a pack of cigarettes. She went in to grab a pack of cigarettes and she called my sister, and my sister and my sister bought me a sandwich and invited me to her home. And um, quickly after that, she had taken me to my mom's. Um, I spent Christmas at my mom's. Everything was good. I thought I had a ear infection. Um, my mom took me to the hospital, and the doctor hooked up monitors to my stomach, and he left the room. He came back in quickly, and he said, you're 36 weeks pregnant. We're going to induce you in an hour. Um, I gave birth to a beautiful baby boy. Um, he did come out on um, meth and marijuana. He's in the, fam uh, the care of my family. Um, thank God for them. Um, I get to see him next week. So the relationship is being restored. Um, since coming, okay, so quickly after that, they came in and they asked me to get help. And I, um, I received it. I, I was more than willing to go. Um, after coming to Teen Challenge, um, I've been cured from hep C. Um, I am going to graduate in January. I'm going to intern. Um, a lot of my family restoration um, I've, I've actually had um, with a few different family members. And um, I thank God every day for their prayers. Um, I know God's answering their prayers. Uh, the, the verse that I stand on is Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans um, to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. God has poured out his love into our hearts through his Holy Spirit, which he has given to us. Is 
morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Tyler. Um, I'm 39 years old. I've been using meth and alcohol for 25 years. Uh, I grew up in a small town uh, in Amador County. Um, not too many people, so everybody knows your business. And uh, my mom and dad were divorced at an early age, and uh, there was traumatic incidents that, that were caused due to their divorce. And uh, my mom remarried. My dad, my stepdad was an alcoholic. My mom used meth, and uh, at the age of 14, I figured out how to get into her drawer and take methamphetamines, and I used for the first time. Um, that continued for years. I learned how to steal. Since my parents didn't have very much money, I learned how to steal and use drugs. And I thought that's what, um, I, thought that's what I was supposed to do growing up. My parents used drugs, so I used drugs. Uh, eventually, I went into the military. I, I tried to fix my life, and I went to the military, and I learned how to drink. And after drinking so much, I turned to cocaine and started using coke. Eventually, I was kicked out of um, the Navy. I went back to Amador County and continued to use drugs and steal until I went to prison. Uh, I got out of prison. I stayed clean and sober for five years. I remarried. Um, things were going good. And then another traumatic incident happened, and I turned right to drugs again. So from then on, uh, I just continued to spiral downhill fast. Um, uh, eventually, I, I, I was heading to prison again, and um, I had a drug and alcohol counselor, and her name was Christy Holbert, Ho Hoggood, and, and she was a Christian. And uh, by the grace of God, I was picked up out of my situation, and I was put into Teen Challenge. And, um, and, 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 and everything that has happened since then has it, it, been a miracle. I, I've had my family restored. My wife came into the program. She's sober. She graduated. Um, I'm a father. I'm a husband. and I'm a son. And, and all these things I didn't think I could have. And, and luckily, I, I, I was able to have um, salvation instead of incarceration. I'm doing a five-year, I'm doing a five-year, four-month prison term right now in Teen Challenge. And, and, and there's nothing else I would want to do. And, and I just give it all to the glory of God and my leaders. And, and, and I just appreciate everything you guys do for us. And, and thank you. And the, the verse that I stand on is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. And search for his will and all you will do. And he will direct your path. Can I just start by saying we missed you guys? <laughs> it is so good to be here at the Cross Worship Center. We love you so much. Thank you for what you do for Teen Challenge. Um, Jeremy, you're awesome. We love you. Uh, Pastor Javi and, and Lorna, who I'm sure are watching, thank you so much. Jesus rescues us in our darkest hour. You were 
heard a voice in the desert calling me out in the dead of night, fighting my battles for me. You were my rescue story. You lifted me up from the ashes, carried my soul from death to life, bringing me from glory to glory. You are my rescue story. You never gave up on me. You never gave up on me. You were my testimony. Oh, oh, oh. you never gave up on me. Oh, you never gave up on me. Oh, you were my testimony. Oh, you never gave up on me. Oh, you never gave up on me. Oh, in the desert calling me out in the dead of night fighting my battles for me you are my rescue story lifting me up from the ashes carrying my soul from death to life bringing me from glory to glory you are my rescue story Never give up on me, never give up on me. You are, you are, yeah, you are my rescue story. Amen. Wow, can we can we give it up for them one more time, please? That was amazing. Um, you know what, you guys, you guys will go ahead and sit down. It's okay. Yeah. Um, you know, I know, I know, uh, hello, um, each one of them probably never thought they would be in a choir, see, that's a gift. Uh, I just wanted to share a, a quick scripture uh, while I end. Um, you know, when we, when we come into Teen Challenge, we come in broken, we come in uh, lost, and there's a, you know, Teen Challenge is a, is, is a difficult program. It's a, a year program. It, it's a whole year. People give up a whole year of their life to come in and, and get recovered. And uh, there's, a, there's a special scripture that I, that I feel hits Teen Challenge right on the dot, and it's out of Luke chapter 6. And he says, um, he also spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. Then he said to the keeper of the, of the vineyard, oh, thank you, Jesus. Then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, Look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this freak tree and find none. Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? But he answered and said to him, Sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well, but if not, after that, you could cut it down. I mean, I was that fig tree. <laughs> I know when I came into the program, I was that fig tree where everybody had lost hope. No one had hope for me no more. Everybody thought I was going to die an alcoholic, right? These students, almost everybody didn't have any hope in them. They thought they were going to die in their addiction, right? But there was, there was Teen Challenge that said, you know what? Let, let, me, let me get them for one. right? And us as staff members, leaders of the program, we come and we Fertilize the ground, you know. We, we dig up the the heart, and we um, we plant and we water, and God makes it grow. You know, but not not only not only are we those that fertilize it and 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 tiller the ground. So community, you guys are part of that. This church is part of that because you guys sow into our ministry. You guys are part of that fertilizer. You guys are part of that seed planting. You guys are part of the watering. So every time you see Teen Challenge come into your church, you, you played a major role in that, and I thank you for that. Because if it's not for you guys, we, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. That, that's absolutely, we would not be able to. So I thank you. I thank you for that. And I, and I ask that you guys continue to, to keep us in your prayers during this time. Um, you know, it's been a hard time for everybody, so please continue to, to pray for us. 
uh, you know, connect with us. We have a jewelry booth uh, over here. We are selling jewelry. If you guys have any questions about Teen Challenge, further questions, if maybe you'd like to volunteer. Uh, we have a lot of people that uh, are very good cooks. They come and cook for us. They come leave us a meal. Um, some of you guys uh, are good at mentoring, um, filing papers, whatever it may be. If you guys just want to press in um, physically, let us know. And of course, uh, there's always uh, the financial part that you're also able, able to help in, if you're able. And we thank you for that. Um, I would just like to pray real quick. Uh, oh, this is a little out of the ordinary. I don't know. Um, can, can I can I pray for you? Yeah. What what is what what is your name? Raymond. Can I pray for you, Raymond? Um. The burden you carry is a heavy burden, but it's not yours to carry, brother. Jesus wants it. I, I have no idea what it is, but but uh, but that that burden that we carry, there's this. We walk around sometimes with a backpack full of junk, and we drag it for way too long. And there's a time where we just gotta let it go. God loves you. He loves you with everything. He died. For, he died for me. He died for you. And, he's, and, and those, those questions that you're seeking, you will find answers to them. God will answer you. And he'll answer you loud and he'll answer you clear. Um, just be ready. Be ready when he calls. Make sure your heart is right. Make it right. People love you. There's people that, that are praying for you. There's people that are, that are, that are praying for you. I'm just going to pray. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. I thank you, Jesus. We thank you for Raymond, Lord. I pray to Heavenly Father that your anointing would be upon him, Father. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what it is, Lord, but I, I know you know, you know every every aspect of his life, dear Heavenly Father. You know, you know every struggle, you know every thought, you know every question, Father, you know every doubt, dear Heavenly Father. You know him, Lord, as he seeks you, Father, when he's when he's questioning you, when he's when he's alone, Father, and no one's around, Jesus, that's when the battle is starts, Father God. And I pray that in those times, Lord, that you would just speak to his heart, Lord. That you would soften his heart, Father. That his ears would be open to hear the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit would find ground in his heart. Jesus, that you would start bringing light into his life, Father. That you would start feeding hope into him when he sees no hope, dear Heavenly Father. That you would just walk right beside him, Jesus Christ. I pray, Father, that you anoint him, Lord, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, dear Lord Jesus. I pray that you would cast down every lie that comes against the truth, Father, in his life, dear Heavenly Father. I pray, Lord, that you would start opening doors in his life that no man can, sh can shut, dear Jesus. And those doors that need to be closed, Father, I pray that you close them, dear Heavenly Father. We pray for those that are, that are, that are all around him, Jesus, that have been praying for him, that have, that have just been uh, feeding into him, Jesus. I just, I just want to lift him up to you right now, Father. I leave him in your hands, Father, and I let the Holy Spirit just do the work. But I know there's something there for him, Father. And I would pray that you would just start moving it now, dear Jesus, in your mighty name, hey, dear Heavenly Father. I pray that you would just start moving it now, Father. Move it now, Jesus. We praise you, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for this time, Jesus, this time of refreshing, Jesus Christ. I pray that the Holy Spirit would just come and fill us, Lord. I thank you for all that you do in our lives, Jesus. I pray for our nation, Lord. I pray for all the church leaders, dear Heavenly Father. I pray that you would refresh us, that you would give, a, uh, give us a renewal, Father. Refresh our minds, our spirits, Father. When we grow weary, Lord, refresh us, dear Holy Spirit. We need you, Lord. We, 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 need, we need people to arise, Lord. Your obedient people, Father, to arise as a mighty army, Lord. So that we can walk in your obedience, Jesus. So that people can come to the throne. So people get to know you more, Father. So they can come closer to you, Jesus. As Pastor said, Lord, Romans 1.16, we will not be ashamed of the gospel, Father. Give us that boldness and that courageous, Father, that you would loosen our lips, Father, that you would season our speech with salt, dear Heavenly Father, so that when we're speaking to someone, they would hear us, Lord. I thank you for this congregation. I thank you for this church, Lord. I pray that your mighty hand would be upon it, that you would continue to bless every single person that walks in through these doors, Lord, that this would be a saving grace for many, dear Jesus, that when they walk in, they walk out different, Father, every single time, every single time, Lord. We love you, Father. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.